and say good evening to all of you. Welcome to our satsang this evening, our meditational satsang. It's wonderful to have you all here. And I'm very blessed and grateful that you are here this evening, especially in light of um, recent events that we've experienced. Um, wonderful to have you uh, here energetically, spiritually, uh, in this space, and it is a sacred space, and uh, we hold whatever is said in the utmost unconditional love and free from judgment, and uh, knowing that you are loved and it is safe and comfortable to share. And uh, we have some very interesting uh, energies going on this evening, so this is kind of a, a special um, satsang this evening. Um, because we've just had, and a lot uh, of people are still feeling the effects of uh, our Hurricane Sandy, uh, or also has been known as um, Tropical Cyclone Sandy. And uh, it's interesting that the cyclone energy has been uh, coming up in uh, various forms. And uh, the reason for that is that of what's coming through for this evening is to speak about what it is that we are receiving in the gifts from Sandy. Now my understanding, um, I was just watching uh, the uh, states there, uh, your weather channel, and uh, they have live feed now uh, on uh, YouTube and have had for a while in case anyone is interested uh, and wishes to go to it. Um, to see what's happening, but my understanding is that the wind currents, uh, although they are calmer now than they were last evening, have uh, basically a span between northern winds all the way down into the region of Florida and all the way up here into eastern Canada. And it's a southerly wind, so basically we've flipped directions. Normally we have the nor northern or northeastern winds in the east coast of Canada and the States, and that's in the north. And uh, then the southerly winds, right, in, in uh, Florida, uh, we've actually reversed that now. Um, due to Sandy. And what this has to do with is the energy of reversals, the energy of shifting to go within, and what actually this hurricane or tropical cyclone is all about. And so we'll start with um, the winds, and being that they are flipping, we are being asked within the winds, the winds are usually a sign of change. And if you notice that, you know, the winds were ferocious and uh, quite a fury last evening and it was showing all of the anger and the hurt and the pain of that region um, being flushed through and blowing through and yet also blowing out and shifting out. And so you can see this dynamic now of the winds being shifted, of the southerly winds now being in the north and the northerly winds being in the south. And so what we're doing is, is we're switching the energy, okay? And along with that, you've noticed that the currents and the tides that blew through and flooded the area, water is a symbol of emotion. Okay, and so anytime you have something severe with water, uh, again, it also has to do with the emotions of anger and hurt and pain that are being flooded within this area to be cleansed and to be shifted and to be healed. Now, the healing balm is the ocean itself, which is salt water, the sea. I am the princess of the sea for a reason. That's the sea of love that's within me and the sea of love, as in love of all that is, and the love that is all of us combined. But it's also the literal sea that we have here on this earth and we also have in the cosmos the sea of energy, the sea of, uh, of actual ocean. And the ocean seawater itself is a healing balm. It's a healing balm of, of re re refreshing. It's a healing balm of also um, showering us with, you know when you go into the ocean, the ocean sea salt water, how healing it feels to you. Okay, but it also is because it's who we are. You know, when we get a cut and we bleed, what is it that it tastes like? Salt. 
okay um, when we cry tears what is it salt so when it is basically mother Gaia or princess Gaia crying out all of her anger and all of her fury and all of her pain and I've heard some people say that uh, you know she's giving birth so it's the water that's broken okay her water has broke and that's exactly it the dam has burst of all of these feelings of anger and uh, hurt and pain that we've all experienced either physically or emotionally or spiritually being unleashed into this one area and being flooded but also being to cleanse now um, someone uh, James I think it was you brought up about uh, a cure uh, or a help for acne um, this is something that you can uh, imbibe within you actually because it is who we are which is sea salt uh, Himalayan sea salt or also um, it's uh, there uh, created in the States which is what I use which is real salt and if you go to realsalt.com uh, Himalayan sea salt and real salt uh, is the salt of the sea it is the salt of the ocean and although uh, you know we're free from liking it being uh, in the subway system per se um, it is getting into the ground of the earth uh, which is the ground of the spiritual beings that are there and the ground of all of us that are there um, because we are there even though we may not physically be living there all of us in some form or fashion are cleansing okay and so the salt water itself if you take some within you during the day a uh, rule of thumb is is that uh, for every um, or you take your your body weight sorry uh, you take your body weight and I will do it in pounds uh, rather than kilograms because it's a little easier um, it, for an example you, let's say you weigh a um, hundred and fifty pounds okay you take that divided in half that's 75 pounds that's how much in ounces um, you know doing it in ounces to make it easier for conversion uh, rather than liters um, is is the amount of water you should be drinking minimum per day that you're meant to drink and within that you take a half of a teaspoon of sea salt and add that to your water either put it on your tongue and then drink it like I do uh, you can use uh, vegetarian gel capsules if you don't like the taste of sea salt um, or uh, you can just mix it within your water and in doing that you help cleanse the body okay and that helps get rid of things like acne and whatnot it also detoxifies the body of um, any toxins physically of things you've been eating environmental toxins it's a way of cleansing and so the gift that Sandy has given us, uh, it is exactly, Fred, it's very alkaline. It is. A sea salt is very alkaline. And so where there's alkalinity within the body physically, then you are able to be free from things like acne or be free from things like carrying excess weight. Um, I was uh, a f with a friend this past weekend and someone who I mentor um, and she had made remark about uh, you know the last little bit of weight that I have if I need help taking it off and to be honest with you most people do not realize and know that um, back uh, you know 12 14 years ago I was actually a plus size 4x I was over 300 50 pounds and so considering where I am now I now wear a size 10 12 um, and so the rest of it is just you know coming off naturally I don't need to physically do anything to release anything I don't have anything to release uh, spiritually or you know mentally or physically um, it's just coming off on its own naturally and I've been doing that through doing sea salt and also you know changing and so the gift that Sandy has given us is this cleansing of the sea salt water I actually saw a picture um, and I believe I still have the link uh, thank you very much Fiona well done indeed um, totally joy 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 um, as uh, Fred uh, said you know um, I saw this picture and I believe I have the link uh, somewhere uh, there was actually a shark uh, somewhere there in New Jersey um, that was uh, taken and um, uh, you know it came upon shore and was actually in this neighborhood swimming
okay so the gift of the sea is now being given us and also within this is the what you can do energetically to shift things like acne and whatnot and is also the gift of sandy is within the water itself of what's happened now even though there's flooding occurring still the waters are now are stilling okay so there's a gentle stillness that comes and so energetically coming into that calmness and that stillness within that peacefulness within because if you've noticed in varying degrees yes business will be back as usual so to speak I guess the New York Stock Exchange is supposed to open up again tomorrow um, however um, for the most part the subway is being the undergroundness of our being you know is being stilled most people were told to either move to higher ground and be with loved ones or friends or whatnot but coming into a stillness the world in that area has stilled and in some respects all over the globe the world has stilled why because we are to take that time to come within to be in the stillness of water water is always moving in some form or fashion even in the stillness but at the same time we are being asked to go within and so people you know are not out on the streets and life is not this busy bee thing going on in in places like New York or New Jersey and whatnot there's a stillness a calmness so that we can take time to go within and really heal energetically and heal spiritually and that also you know in that space of being de-stressed will help with acne as well as other um, what we call diseases or disorders in life is when we come into a sense of ease and peacefulness now there's something else that uh, Santi has given us which is what is going to lead us into our meditation for this evening and that is something that was given to me this morning um, that I posted on my Facebook wall and also on to our uh, Sacred Path Sacred Union group which is the uh, Nautilus uh, spiral uh, circle of energy and spiral of energy which is within the Fibonacci secret sequence um, which is the golden spiral or the golden ratio of uh, pi and of uh, of life and I have a link um, that I'll post here in the chat for those of you who didn't see it on my Facebook uh, as well that you can go to if you um, do not know about uh, the essence um, of what I'm speaking about here in sacred geometry and uh, I will also post the link uh, as well in our archive this evening because this is being recorded so that everyone uh, who is unable to be here live with us will be able to access this via YouTube later and what this is is the infinite spirals of life within this Nautilus energy is the essence of who we are and for those of you who do not know anything about sacred geometry basically we repeat spirals again and again and again spiritually um, and energetically and I just happened to go see and I'm going to do a YouTube video about this uh, at some point probably in the next couple of days uh, I just went to go see uh, last evening uh, the movie Cloud Atlas and it talks about this multi-dimensionalness of uh, other lives it's also very much a twin soul movie but within this it has to do with the sacred geometry of how everything is infinitely connected and everything comes and goes within an infinite spiral and it comes back again and so that's the gift that Sandy has given us as well because if you were to look at uh, the picture um, of the satellite image of our uh, energy that is uh, swirling with Sandy you will notice it is actually in the form of the uh, golden ratio in the golden spiral and it's quite a beautiful picture and I will uh, post it here actually on the group um, here for everyone who has not seen it you can look at it and then um, I will also again also post it in the um, in the uh, archive as well so within this um, Wayne Dyer had posted something about 
um, the uh, hurricane and um, I agreed with him and what he said uh, was this uh, whether it is the tsunami or an earthquake or a hurricane or any kind of natural disaster it brings out our true nature our original nature as Lao Tzu calls it which is reverence for all life kindness simplicity caring and serving we show our love for God by serving one another. Please join me in continuing to send prayers, love, and support to all those affected by the hurricane. And I wrote this that um, I agree with what he says. I will also say that, you know, having to do with the, the, uh, the water, that it has to do with washing clean. Uh, you know, things and coming to our true nature because our true nature is love. And so tonight, um, what we're going to do in meditation is we are going to go into that spiral essence because um, Wayne Dyer uh, also talked about in the movie The Shift, if any of you have seen it, it was formerly called Ambition to Meaning. Um, and in it, he talks about a story of how he went up a spiral staircase, which again is very much the, uh, the Nautilus seashell, uh, that spiral energy, the spiral of life. And um, uh, he talks about how he received a healing that day in going up those stairs. And the reason for it was is that he had a knee that um, was pretty much on its last legs. It was pretty much bone on bone. And they had said that he needed to have surgery on it. And the spiral staircase, if I remember correctly, uh, was uh, somewhere in uh, Italy uh, where they were uh, doing uh, a tour of uh, St. Francis of Assisi. And so you go up this spiral staircase and it gets narrower and narrower. And there was a gentleman who um, was unable to walk and had uh, leg braces. And so every time he would go up a stair, he had to swing way out to um, do this, you know, to get to the next step, and he could not do so. And so um, as he got up the, the stairs, you know, it got tighter and tighter, and he got to the point where he could not go any further. And he basically looked at Wayne and said, look at I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I can't go any further. And there's a whole line of people behind Wayne, and a whole line of people, of course, in front of him, and they're all going up to this top here to see this grand beauty. And without even thinking of himself, he thought more for another and wanted more for another. So he basically took this gentleman on his back, knowing full well that his knee was what it was, and carried this man up the stairs. And as he was getting up the stairs, you know, people were looking at him, including, I believe it was his former wife, you know, wondering what in the world he's doing, because, you know, obviously she knew that, you know, his knee being what it was. And he said in those moments he received a healing, for as he got to the top, um, you know, even in those moments that he was going up, he felt like, you know, maybe he couldn't do it. And all of a sudden, something uplifted him. And he was able to get all the way up to the top carrying this man. And uh, as he set the man down, he ceased to have any hurt or any pain in his um, knee any longer. And still to this day, it is completely healed. So Fiona made reference to the fact that she just recently had a... Um, surgery uh, for a hernia and so tonight what we're going to do is, is we're going to do a meditation in going up the spiral staircase and we're going to heal as Sandy has given us the gift of healing within the healing waters of the sea and the sea salt and the beautiful winds and the tides in bringing us all into that space of our own true nature and healing will result now for all of us so within that I invite you to simply close your eyes and to take some slow deep breaths just breathing in that beautiful air that salt air and breathing out the essence of love the sea, the 
a sea of love. And as you breathe out, breathe out love. And as you just keep seeing yourself breathing in and out, calmly and gently, deep breath. Imagine yourself at a lighthouse on the shore of the sea. And imagine that it's a beautiful white lighthouse, perhaps crystalline in essence actually, made out of crystal shining a bright white light at the top of it and it's beckoning you calling you you can feel the winds the winds of change blowing as you're standing there on the shore see yourself walking to this lighthouse Feeling the beautiful ocean breeze. Strong currents are whipping around on the ocean, bringing about change within the winds and the tides. The sea of your heart. And envision now that you see a door this lighthouse of crystal and that you effortlessly open it and go through it and you are standing at the bottom of this lighthouse and as you gaze up there is a spiral staircase made out of crystalline energy steps leading all the way up to the top of the lighthouse where the light of your heart resides. You can still hear the essence of the shore, the shoreline of your heart and the waves crashing against the rocks as the door you leave open to this lighthouse so you can hear the shoreline of your heart. And you start to walk up this staircase now. And with each step, each step seems to light up. And you're stepping on crystalline energy. And it lights up whatever color you choose. As you go up the spiral of life. There are many steps. And as you go up each step, just notice how much calmer you feel, relaxed you feel. And see each step lighting up a color, whatever color that is for you. It can be a different color for each step the same color, whatever color you see, just keep going up the stairs, up the spiral, and as you go up the spiral, you see different events and people of your life, perhaps other lives that are passing before you. Just notice them. Be free from attachment. Just notice them. And as you keep going up further and further up these steps, notice how the spiral 
is getting smaller and smaller and yet smaller still. Each step it seems as if it's getting tighter and tighter and closing in. to the point where you feel closed in. What does that feel like? Perhaps you're feeling you can't even make it up to the top of the steps anymore. They seem to go on forever and ever. and seeing it smaller and smaller and smaller as you're going deeper and deeper deeper and deeper into it now you've come to the top of the last step and you step on it the step turns black. Black nothingness. And before you, there's another door. And you open it. And you walk inside to a very dark and small room. In fact, this room is so small that it only has room for you. You barely fit into this room. Your head, in fact, almost touches the ceiling. You have very little room, and it feels very confining. This is the room of your box. The room of limitations, the room of all the things that you feel that are unhealed within you. Notice that there's a storm raging of things unhealed, something physical unhealed perhaps, such as acne or the hernia. Or something else that's there, something emotionally unhealed within you, something spiritually unhealed within you. Whatever it is, just notice it. Just notice that it's there. Finding it feels holding on to that. How tight this room feels. How unpleasant it feels. Perhaps you feel like you want to break free at this point and let go of what is hurting you physically or what is causing you pain and hurt and suffering emotionally or spiritually. those moments, simply say to yourself, I am ready to release. I am ready to let go of all that pain and hurt. And notice that in this darkened room now, there's a light. It's the light of the full moon coming through. As there is a window, a small window, now appearing in your room. And the light of the full moon, this hunter's moon, is now shining upon you. And just 
allow it to bathe you and starting to heal you. Feel how good that feels of the healing light of the full moon. Notice now that this window is getting bigger and more light is coming in and bathing you in healing. And see yourself walk over to this window now and open it. Feel the winds come rushing in, blowing strongly, blowing out all of that darkness and healing you and seeing how beautiful you are with such an ease and a peace. All of a sudden, the shoreline of your heart has reached all the way up to the top of this lighthouse, and the waters of the sea, the sea salted waters, are now flooding in through this window, and seeing it pour all over you like a rain, like the rain of a storm of cleansing. Healing anything physical, anything spiritual, anything emotional that was causing hurt or pain. Now is a flow of water and ease just flooding over you in a huge love shower, cleansing you. Releasing you, ready to receive the sea of love. And notice how your room is now brighter and lighter. That you're now at the top of the lighthouse where the beacon of light is. As the water is still flowing through you, giving birth to a new you, fully healed and seeing yourself healed. You say to yourself, I am vibrant healing. See the water now dissipate into a vapor, a mist of whatever, whatever color you choose. And you're in this bright, beautiful room and you look out the window, big, huge window encircling the whole top of the lighthouse the light of your heart shining out as a beacon to all, and you can see that the sea is now just a calm rolling ocean, and how beautiful it is. Just stand there and gaze upon the peace for a moment. 
taking the beauty, taking the peace, the effortless flow of your life. How your life flows just like the sea. For it is the sea of your heart. sea of life. Just enjoy that beauty and that healing and peace. come back to this lighthouse. It is your sacred safe space, the sacred resonance of your heart, the beacon of light of love that you are. Now as you turn around, you walk out of the top of the lighthouse and see the spiral staircase once more, starting at the tighter spiral of the beginning of the steps, and as you step on the first step, that step that once was black now turns a bright, brilliant white light. Still in energy once more. See yourself coming down the stairs effortlessly in a circle, in a spiral, effortlessly and easily, knowing you are infinitely healed and he infinite healing, infinite love and light. See all of the steps lighting up beautiful colors, vibrant, much more vibrant than before. And seeing them getting wider and wider as you come down the spiral into the bigger part of life. Feeling that joy and that peace and that ease and that flow and that healing and that love. And as you come down effortlessly now to the bigger part of the circle, down to the very bottom floor of the lighthouse, all full of light and healing, look up at the top of your lighthouse now and see it all lit up with beautiful light and say thank you. lighthouse now, and back on to the shore, the shoreline of your heart, and bless that sea, for now you can go out and give this gift to the world of the sea of love. And see the sea now in the lighthouse simply fade into a beautiful mist of love as you start to feel yourself coming back here more fully into the room where you are start feeling your toes and your essence of your physical form here you can start to open your eyes fully back with us in the beautiful essence of love and healing and ease and peace and flow that is yours now 
on unto forevermore. Welcome back, beautiful souls. Oh, what a gift Sandy has given us. Thank you, Sandy, for your beautiful gift. I actually had to laugh when I heard that um, it was Nick, It was called Sandy because uh, spelled differently with an I, uh, Sandy was our golden retriever, our family's golden retriever, and she uh, crossed over, uh, what was that, about 12 years ago now, I guess. And um, so I had to laugh and say that our dog was leashing uh, her fury <laughs> and giving us something amazing. Uh, but now that uh, everybody's coming back, uh, James is saying, ha, ha, ha. Uh, we will uh, open it up to the satsang portion to the evening. And uh, anybody who feels called to share in such sacred resonance, such sacred space, uh, please feel free to do so. Fiona says, wow, that was so peaceful. Thank you. I went off somewhere. Feel like porcelain. Ah, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear it, love. That's beautiful. I'm glad that you feel so peaceful. That was the intent. Because now that there's some activity that is to come about in cleaning up for Sandy and many people's lives coming back together, uh, that is also the infinite gift that uh, Sandy has also given us, which is the fact of coming together because um, many people will have experienced a breakdown now um, in losing their homes, losing their lives. Uh, we've had, uh, I think, between Canada and here about uh, 45 deaths I've heard. Um, so those loved ones who have crossed over to what we call the other side of the veil. Um, but, we've, but we're also having a breakdown of losing those things so that we could come to what's really important. And that is being together and being love and loving and coming together and helping one another in co-creation and community and cooperation. Uh, rather than a fight or flight or competition and that's the greatest gift Sandy has given us because it often takes a moment of what we perceive to be tragedy which really is free from being tragedy at all it's a beautiful experience to give us this gift for us to get in touch with what's really important and it's not those things Yes, some people have lost homes in the fact that they don't have a roof over their head now to sleep under. But look at what's going to come from it. Those who will help out in rebuilding those homes or those who will provide other homes for those people so that they all come together in community, in family, in love and that we come to understand that family is not just our blood it can be our family of origin, it can be blood, and that's wonderful. 
but because we're all one and we're all connected by this same energy, this same source essence of who we are, we are all family anyway, even if we are quote-unquote strangers and don't know each other. I will tell you, in going through uh, being almost homeless once and being homeless twice, if it were not for the kindness of strangers, of people who I didn't even know, uh, physically, who came to help me in such times, and also friends and family who did come to help in such times. I don't know what I would have done. And so it's a means for us to all come together. And not just in this happening also. That's the thing. We are to not just wait for some sort of hurricane or some sort of disaster, quote-unquote, to happen before we all come together in community and in love and sharing and helping one another. We are to be this 24-7 all the time. And that's, that's what these gifts of Sandy are meant to give us, not just a certain place and time that we're supposed to be this. We're to be this continuously, giving to ourselves first. And Fiona, for you, this is key. Uh, James said, an expansive experience. Yes, indeed. Fiona, this is key for you and for all those who tend to give to others first. When you give to others first, that's what causes things like hernias and whatnot. And I know I've gotten physically sick myself from giving too much of myself from being in that place of giving, 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 giving without filling my cup first. It is not selfish ever to fill your cup up first. You are to love yourself first and then have your cup runneth over and flood everyone else. Giving, giving, giving from that place of not having your cup full first comes from a neediness of um, needing to be accepted, needing to be approved of, needing love. And when you're doing that, all you do is deplete your own resources and you're not loving yourself. And so I invite you to love yourself first. Come to a place of peace and ease first, just like you did here in this meditation. And then from there, from within, from there, out is how you give, rather than from giving first. Fiona says, yes, I understand. Thank you. You're very welcome. And in that, things like, um, James, you were inquiring about uh, having to do with acne and things of that nature, will subside. Now, I have noticed, because I am still in menopause myself, gosh darn it, um, <laughs> that um, I also have influx, Fiona, you said me too, yeah, exactly, I have influx of hormonal influx, inf and fluctuations which also causes my immune system to go out of whack um, and so that brings about uh, issues of lupus breakouts for me um, but for acne um, again as we talked about uh, earlier um, it's a, a combination of both spiritual and physical and so when you come into alkalinity spiritually emotionally and physically then those things like acne are free from happening uh, James said, uh, from our aligned perspective, we have something to give. Agreed. A you agree. Yeah, exactly. Um, when we are in alignment, then we have something to give. That's how I come from. That's the place I come from. And I invite you all to come from as well. Um, because um, there was a point in time in my life 14 years ago and earlier before that um, where truly, and I've said this in a YouTube video, um, recently that I truly hated myself. I did. I totally did not love myself. I was very much in victim consciousness mode. Um, I was very much in a poor me attitude and I was attempting to give from that and be a, at that time I was married, so be a wife and a mother and give, give, give um, from that standpoint. So I know I've lived the other side of it and I know that uh, all it did for me, which perpetuated the cycle and circle of that victim consciousness, I felt um, un unloved and unappreciated, um, mainly by my former husband at that time, is who I was placing the blame on, looking outside of me, um, you know, attempting to find somebody to blame for this uncomfortableness within me, which really it had to do with being uh, within me. And so when I shifted my focus into being in a sense of ease and peace and love within me and loving myself, then I was able to and have been since able to give from within and give it out 
um, you know, rather than fe feeling tired all the time and unloved and unappreciated, um, you know, uh, because I, it was me. I was coming from that energetic place of, you know, giving and giving and giving from, uh, you know, a place of not loving myself. And uh, so I know exactly where that, you know, um, is for most people. And that's what we do because we've been taught that we're to give. But we've not been taught to give from that place of being aligned first. We've been taught to give um, out of a sense of obligation, out of a sense of, um, uh, you know, unworthiness and not loving ourselves first because we've been taught that to love yourself first is selfish. It's actually soulful. And being in alignment is actually the key um, to then giving to others so that you're not depleting yourself because then what you're doing is you're coming from an infinite source of energy. You have energy that's constantly being given to you from source, through you from source. And so you're utilizing that energy which is infinite and never runs out. When you're giving from that space of neediness and wanting to be accepted and loved and approved of and whatnot, you're trying to give energy from within you and that depletes very fast, much like a car depletes, you know, its gas, right? Um, Fred says, Master Cleanse for Detoxing of the Body. Uh, indeed, Fred, I agree with you. Master Cleanse is very similar, um, although for me um, personally and others may have issues with this, I will say if I remember correctly from what the Master Cleanse uh, uh, is about, uh, it uh, talks about putting cayenne pepper in it. For me personally, I am free from being able to do cayenne pepper. I cannot do spicy things um, because uh, and too much spicy things in excess for anyone, too much of anything in excess for anyone, puts the body out of balance. I used to do a lot of spicy things. That's what contributed to uh, that and, and other things spiritually and energetically that, you know, I was holding on to, um, created uh, issues with my gallbladder and uh, ended up having to have my gallbladder out. Um, so uh, because I do not have a gallbladder and rely upon the energy of my uh, liver to do its work for me, I cannot tolerate uh, spicy things. So um, there may be other people who have that similar issue. So uh, what resonates with you is what, and your body is what you're meant to do. And, um, you know, so for those who are able to do cayenne pepper and do the master cleanse as it is, you know, given, uh, basically from what I understand, all the master cleanse is basically similar to what I talked about with just doing sea salt and water added, I believe it's lemon, cayenne pepper, pepper and I believe it might be honey as well. Um, so, uh, you know, all of that is wonderful, um, but if your body is unable to tolerate it like my, mine is uh, when it comes to cayenne pepper, uh, then do what works best for you, what resonates with you always, uh, you know, is what is uh, meant to be, you know, for you. Uh, Fred said, selfish is good, greedy is not. Yes, there's a difference. Um, thank you for pointing that out, Fred. Uh, there is a difference between being selfish and greedy. Greedy is that egoic um, compulsion energy, which again comes from fear. Okay, and it is fear of not enoughness, and so you have to hoard things. And uh, that could be anything. Um, from hoarding energy to, or attempting to hoard energy, not that you can really hoard energy. Energy is just energy. Uh, but people would like to think in their ego that they can hoard energy or hoard things or not be giving. Um, but when you're coming from a greedy sense, that's an ego compulsion of fear, um, again, which is fear of not being loved, not being accepted, uh, not loving yourself within first. Um, and uh, selfish is self and an ish. Okay, it's the fishing for yourself, basically, um, you know, uh, and it is being in that space of self, not is not in the egoic, greedy sense, but in a soulful way in which you are coming from a place of love. And so when you're doing that, that's definitely, you know, in alignment. Uh, James says, right, greedy is looking at it from a competitive perspective or lack base, I think. Yes, exactly. Again, it's that same thing, right? Greed is coming from that competitiveness. And we were taught fight or flight. 
uh, and we were taught competitiveness and greed and uh, competition and it's an us versus them world and that's the indoctrinational programming that we you know came into and uh, it's not our true nature you know going back to what Wayne Dyer said that you know Lao Tzu said our true nature is love our true nature is ease our true nature is that flow it's cooperation and and uh, and creation together and co-creation together and individually as well in balance but it's all about that um, and so when you're coming from a greedy standpoint yeah it's very much egoic and an essence of um, that fight or flight and uh, that us versus them and competition uh, indoctrinational programming rather than cooperation and uh, coming together in that energy of love so very very good very good does anybody have any um, other questions or any comments or anything you'd like to share it doesn't have to be about uh, you know Sandy or about uh, anything in particular if you have any satsang questions to sit in the truth with um, about anything spiritual please feel free to share such we just had someone new enter the room welcome to whoever our newest guest is um, it's good to have you here this evening uh, and uh, we are just uh, asking if there's uh, any questions or anything you'd like to share. Uh, Fred says, learning love and co-creating is part of the path. Yes, it is. And so is the opposite experience of the competition and the um, us versus them and whatever. That indoctrinational programming that we uh, had and our new guest left the room evidently uh, which is fine um, uh, that that programming was here for a reason it was so that we could uh, experience the opposite we were meant to experience the opposite so that we could come to remember who we are and uh, that's what we chose when we came here so it has its role and its purpose it's just when we come into the path of understanding that okay we no longer want to play that game we want to play the game of love and co-creating and uh, that's a lot better than constantly hitting our heads against the brick wall and uh, fighting and uh, you know all of this other stuff uh, <laughs> well said James said thank you uh, you know you come to the point where you say okay I would rather choose choose to no longer play that game and uh, this is the game I choose to play which is the game of love and the game of co-creating and the game of cooperation and coming together and of course that's not to say that you know you don't have a balance of moments when you wish to be alone I just had uh, this conversation with um, you know a woman who I mentor here locally uh, who is also a friend uh, she has made it her business lately to um, uh, say uh, to me that you know she's now come out of the closet so to speak in the sense of she's meant to be out and about and she spent her time you know in seclusion she didn't use those words but um, you know uh, paraphrasing some of the things that she said and uh, I understand where she's at because I, I did that been there and done it I've had both moments of extreme seclusion and also moments of being fully out there uh, when I was out on the international speaking circuit and whatnot and uh, I've come into balance to understand that um, we are to have moments of both you know moments of, of uh, time to go within and uh, also moments and times to uh, be in t together in co-creation you know we don't need to spend 24 7 in seclusion but we don't need to spend 24 7 in community either it's a combination of both it's a balance of both and uh, so that's the place that I've come into and and uh, you know exploring both aspects and and oftentimes we experience one extreme or the other so that we can come into balance and uh, be that balance and have both and because we live in a both and universe uh, rather than an either or or one extreme or the other so with that said is there anything else that anyone would like to share or any other questions you would like to ask 
Please feel free. We'll make this the last call for the evening. Fiona says, thank you for tonight. You're very welcome, love. Big smile. You're very welcome. James says, thank you as always. You're very welcome. It's an honor and pleasure to be here with you. And uh, we are here every Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and also on archive on YouTube. Uh, but we're here every uh, every Tuesday evening live um, here on the OM. The OM. I like that. The OM. <laughs> the OM Meditation Group. There we go. The Our Ascension Meditation Group. So that's an OM. Our Ascension Meditation. The OM. <laughs> the OM Meditation Group. Uh, spiritual satsang evening. And uh, I'll always, uh, you know, as always, give you blessings of infinite love, infinite peace, ease, and bliss, and joy. Be with you always. And um, I will see you here again next week. Uh, Fred says namaste and thank you. You're very welcome, love, uh, anytime. And uh, I will be seeing you on Saturday <laughs> at our local gathering, um, indeed. And uh, much love to all of you. And uh, we will uh, connect again soon. And we are always infinitely connecting anyway, heart to heart and soul to soul. Thank you for being here this evening. Espavo.